threat. In coming days, he will review what information was available to whom, determine what mistakes were made in assessing or sharing that information, commend those who did their jobs well, and hold accountable those who did not. NBC's Mike Vicara joins us live from the White House. And Mike, the president himself, or at least the White House, has put out a statement uh, as far as the president's uh, reaction to the report he got. Tell us about it. Well, you're absolutely right, David. Of course, the president continuing on in Hawaii. He's been there since Christmas Eve. We expect him back here at the White House on Sunday. And then, as you mentioned, on Tuesday, he's going to meet with all the relevant heads. And that was part of the statement. All the relevant agency heads that had something to do with this incident on Christmas Day, the attempted attack on that airliner. The president said he spoke with the Homeland Security Advisor here, John Brennan, about, again, as the president phrased it, human and systemic failures that led to the incident. And, of course, there are two views, as you know, David, going on right now. One about the intelligence, one about the detection. He also spoke with the Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano on detection overseas at some of these airports, what the United States can do for extending the perimeter to these other checkpoints, these other customs areas, these other passport control areas, and other countries as people fly here to the United States. The president says he will receive these, he has received these assessments. He will read them this evening. Uh, and then Tuesday comes back here and meets with the agency heads amid a storm of criticism uh, from many on Capitol Hill and, of course, many Republicans and Dick Cheney. We've talked about that over the last 24 hours, David. And, Mike, you're so great on uh, many things, including the political analysis. And explain the political optics of the president and the White House putting out the statement indicating all the various things the president is doing and, and why that is so important for him politically right now. Well, I think early on, David, particularly after Sunday when Secretary Napolitano made her comment that the system worked and then after that Republicans just jumped all over uh, the president. I mean much has been made here in the last few days about the Republicans track record of taking advantage of a perceived weakness uh, at least perceived as far as Republicans concerned about Democrats on national security issues. This is nothing new as uh, some of the historical data that we've seen some of the reactions in our other foreign policy crises not only over the Obama administration of course the Obama administration but going back much much further, perhaps generations. Uh, and so the White House has tried to stay out ahead of this story. Uh, initially stung by the criticism that the president was in Hawaii, had been golfing for five hours on one particular day, finally came out three days uh, after the incident. Again, much has been made of the comparison with President Bush in the shoe bomber incident when it took him six days to come out. But the, uh, I think the White House is very cognizant of the fact uh, that there is this vulnerability, uh, that people at Capitol Hill, Democratic allies, are concerned about it. We've seen Democratic leaders fight back very strongly yesterday, and I think that's part of the political dynamic here, David. NBC's Mike Vicara. Mike, great stuff as always. Thank you, and have a great New okay, Year. Okay, happy New Year. You too. In the bigger picture, what kept our government from being able to connect the dots before the attempted airline bomber on bombing on Christmas Day? President Obama, as you heard, called the situation totally unacceptable and said the information available in the intelligence community should have been pieced together earlier. So who dropped the ball and how can it be prevented? NBC terrorism analyst Evan Coleman joins us live. And Evan, uh, White House spokesman Robert Gibbs is quoted as saying there's no one person that should be blamed here. And I suppose that's that's true, but there are a lot of people who share responsibility, right? Yeah, I, I think this is a shared responsibility. I mean, first of all, there is the ex-administration, the Bush administration has spent eight years talking about intelligence reform, promising intelligence reform, and it simply never happened. I mean, this is not the only instance of this. We've seen multiple instances just in the last two or three months, whether it's Major Hassan down in the Fort Hood massacre, or whether it's the latest incident with uh, Abdul Muttalib. Clearly, the intelligence reform did not happen. There's also the issue about the leadership of al-Qaeda in Yemen. Al-Qaeda in Yemen is a relatively new al-Qaeda franchise. It only got its big boost after the Bush administration sent back several high-ranking Saudi al-Qaeda members from Guantanamo Bay uh, against the recommendations of the military, against the recommendations of intelligence agencies. Guess what? They went back there and they started this big franchise. Certainly, there's also blame to go on the Obama administration. I mean, they've been in power now for a year. And over a year, they haven't done a hell of a lot about trying to reform the mistakes that
that were being made by the Bush administration in terms of intelligence sharing. So I think it's time for us to find out exactly what's going wrong with our intelligence agencies and fix it. It's, it's not a matter of sweeping the problem under a rug. It's not a matter of saving face. This is an issue about human lives, and it's an issue about U.S. national security. And whoever failed here, whether it's a bureaucrat within the CIA or whether it's a politician, there needs to be consequences. People need to be fired. <laughs> And Evan, as far as the uh, the politics on this, uh, there's been, as we've reported before, uh, the 9/11 Commission recommended the United States get these uh, body scanning, scanning, image making sort of devices in airports. Congress refused to go along. <laughs> Republicans and Democrats rejected the billion dollars in spending. Is there a sense in the intelligence community right now, or that at least perhaps leading up to this incident, that there was not the political will to take some of these steps? That perhaps the politicians, at least in Congress, were not taking this seriously? Yeah. Look, I mean, eight years after 9. 11, a lot of people forgot that this is a real serious threat. And it's not just a matter of people carrying out attacks in Saudi Arabia. It's not just a matter of the Taliban in Afghanistan, that there are people who would like to carry out terrorist attacks right here. That reality left us. And instead, these folks have been focused in on issues which are really not relevant. And I think if you look at how quickly uh, uh, the, the support for trying to limit the use of, of the sniffer devices and of the body imaging equipment, suddenly that's all vanished. All the complaints, all the objections to that, it's all vanished in a matter of days. Why? Because suddenly people realize there's something a little bit more than worrying about your own, you know, what you look like on an imaging scanner. It's whether or not you survived your next airline flight. That's the critical issue. I mean, there are so many pl places here we could have made progress. We could have done something where there, there could have been an effective action taken and there wasn't. And again, somebody needs to pay the price. People need to be fired, whether that's the CIA or elsewhere. There needs to be a sense that there are consequences for failure, because if there are no consequences, Consequences for failure. This is going to happen again and again and again. NBC terrorism analyst Evan Coleman. Evan, um, thank you so much for coming in and uh, have a great new year. Enjoy. Thank you.